Hello and welcome to episode 174 of the Thinking LSAT podcast in Los Angeles. I'm Nathan Fox with me in Vienna, Virginia, Ben Olson. Hey. Happy New Year. Yeah, likewise, man. Any uh, New Year's resolutions? You know, I don't really do New Year's resolutions. No? Why not? I guess I feel like if I ever have a goal, I'm just going to set it right then. I'm not going to wait till New Year's, you know? <laughs> I do love the December, like everybody putting off all of their like, oh, I'm going to be back on the keto diet soon. And I'm like, as they're eating, you know, just whatever shit they should not be eating <laughs> pumpkin pie. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> I, I'm going to, I'm going to be back on the keto diet. And it's like, oh yeah. Cause you're waiting for the new year to start your new shit. That's a good point. <laughs> well, I also, that has just been my general trend, but to support this, I I was just listening to this book called Unfuck Yourself by um, (laughs) Gary John Bishop. And one thing that he said that I thought was interesting is that, well, the whole book, I think, I just started listening to it, is about the whole world of self-talk, which I hadn't really paid attention to, but he's like, everyone talks to themselves. And in fact, the majority of the things that that you say every day is actually stuff in your head that you're saying to yourself. And as he was saying that, I was like, oh, I guess that's true. I, he's like, don't worry, everyone does it. So, <laughs> and you're doing it right now as you're listening to his book. And I was like, yeah, I guess you're right. But anyways, one of the things that he said is that a lot of times when people set goals, they talk about what they will do as opposed to what they are doing. And it's like on some level you've already conceded the fact that you're not doing that right now and that it's something that will happen in the future. Even worse is like saying things like I should do this or I should do that, suggesting you might never do it. At least Will is saying that you plan on doing it. But he suggested rethinking of things as like I am going to do this now right? Like if you're planning to lose weight, then start right now, right? Like choose this moment to eat something better than uh, something worse. I I don't know what the plan is, but the point is, is that the way you talk to yourself and the way you think is powerful and can affect your behavior. But I think when a lot of times people are looking like new year's resolution seems sort of like a joke to me. I mean, I'm sorry if you're, I'm maybe you're about to tell me some new year's resolutions that you have, but Like everybody (laughs) waits until this time. Right. And then it's like, we're going to do this. And then everybody does it for like a week and then it doesn't happen anymore. It just like, if you're serious about change, you're going to change right now in this moment and you're going to become a different person or at least, you know, start walking in that direction immediately. Powerful. Wow. No, I, I totally agree. I think that that's, I think that that's great. I was, um, no, I was just trying to make some friendly chit chat at the top of the show. Oh. Then. <laughs> <laughs> I took it so seriously. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Um, today on the show, we have an offer, f- uh, that from a law school for the spring 2019 semester. Oh, wait, what? Dear God. Yeah. <laughs> that's it's right January, now. 2019. Yeah. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> wow. We have uh, a thank you email from a listener. Oh, that's nice. We have an update on the digital LSAT for international students. Ooh, that's new news for me. I I can't wait to hear that. Yeah, okay. We have a question from LSAT India. And we, if we have time, we have a personal statement uh, to review. You can email the show, help at thinkinglsat.com. Send us your selfies when you do that, please, so that we have a uh, face to put with your email. We have a podcast, Thinking LSAT podcast group on Facebook. Uh, Oops, I didn't update that membership number, but we have something like 1,200 members now in the Thinking LSAT podcast group on Facebook. (laughs) Quick note about that. There's some bad advice, Ben, that people are giving on that podcast group. So just Mm. I want to make it clear that I do not endorse the advice that people are giving on the Thinking LSAT podcast group. (laughs) It's, It's great that people are there. And, you know, having a community, that's awesome. But um, just be careful who you're taking advice from, because there's people on that group who I seriously, I just, I just, I'm not sure if they listen to the show or not. Huh. Okay. Good to know. I yeah. think they might've just like put LSAT into Facebook and then just joined it and then just don't listen to the podcast or don't, <laughs> don't take our advice at all. 
but they still like participate weirdly in the discussion on the podcast group. I don't get it. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, while you're there wasting your life on Facebook, you can also give uh, thinking else at Facebook page, a like if you're over on Twitter, uh, the show is at thinking else at I am at N Fox. Ben is at Olson Benjamin. You can visit strategyprep.com and foxlsat.com to learn about our services, including live classes in DC, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and all sorts of online and one-on-one options. But what we're really excited about these days is the LSAT demon. Ben, you have been working your ass off. Thank you on the LSAT demon. I've been making new explanations for the LSAT demon. Any updates? Yeah. So last time I talked about the timed section feature, we were all ready to launch that. And then in the final testing, we ran into a small bug. It has to do with uh, all the data that we're processing for each user. Um, (laughs) There's a lot of variables up in the air and we didn't realize that this one was being affected. So we ultimately decided between us all to not uh, release the new feature even in beta mode, but we are so close and we will be very soon uh, releasing that within the next week or so. So I'm excited about it. And then people will have a whole new option to take time sections on their phone at any time, anywhere. Excellent. We were just talking about how the demon adjusts to your level and it, it makes it makes it easy for us to give advice, huh? We're, we like don't, <laughs> people are like, what should I be working on? Yeah. And we're like, um, well, just do the LSAT demon <laughs> because the demon will adjust itself to your level and it'll tell you exactly what you should be working on. Yeah. The other thing that we were talking about is how you don't have to be studying for very long, right? If you're sitting there in the doctor's office waiting for your doctor, as we all do, I don't know why that profession still thinks that they can just let us wait. But while you're waiting there, you can do a logical reasoning question or something. You can squeeze in LSAT t- studying all over the place anywhere, and you don't have to be carrying your books around. So, Yeah, you can do quite a few while you're at the doctor's office, because you're going to be waiting in line to check in. Then you're going to be waiting in the lobby to get called. Then you're going to be waiting in the little yep. room for the doctor to actually come <laughs> yeah. and talk to you. <laughs> so you got like three different... Oh, then you're going to be waiting at the pharmacy to go get your mm-hmm. prescription or whatever. So yeah, um, yeah you have several opportunities while you're sitting there at the Kaiser or whatever to <laughs> to get a few LSAT questions in. And I mean, you just chip away at it, right? You do a little bit yeah. every day and uh, it's amazing how much progress you can make. Exactly. Like that. Yeah. Cool. I also wanted to thank users for their feedback. Uh, it's awesome when you run across a question that you there's not an explanation for and you want an explanation. You just say, hey, give us an explanation. And that comes straight to me and I get my ass to work um, on making new explanations. I've been making video explanations, but we've gotten feedback that people really like having written explanations as well as uh, video explanations. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be producing more of those in 2019. Wait, I am producing more of those in 2019. (laughs) And uh, that's good because I love writing and it's a, it's like I get a little writing prompt uh, in my email box and uh, I'm going to start cranking those out. So you should see more and more written explanations popping up in the demon as you continue to use it. Yeah. Cool. Anything I should else? say that I love your written explanations, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. I yeah. Wow, that's my best compliment so far of 2019. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no problem. They're very funny. <laughs> the Goldilocks rule. Yeah, so this is something that I came across a few weeks ago, and I put it in here or forgot to put it in here. This is just something I was reading about. So as it's not as current now, but when we were really messing around with the algorithm in the demon... Uh, to get it to target your weaknesses, I was reading stuff about the Goldilocks rule. The Goldilocks rule is this idea that for people to make the most effective use of their time on anything that they're trying to learn, they need to be tested at, well, the reading was saying, at a place where they're getting 75% of the questions that they're doing correct. Um, And so we ended up making the algorithm uh, mirror that research. So that's exactly what happens. If, if you're getting a, 
it's, it's a little more complicated than this, but if you're getting above uh, 75% correct of the questions you're doing, the demon's going to give you harder questions to try to bring that down. And then if you're doing worse than that, it's going to give you easier questions to try to bring your accuracy rate up. Because around 75%, I guess, people are being challenged enough that uh, they're going to be moving forward, but it's not so hard that they're now discouraged and lost and, you know, not making progress. So the Goldilocks rule is trying to find that happy spot where people are being challenged just enough to make progress, but not too much. Excellent. Here we have a uh, thank you from a user. It just says, hey guys, I love the site so much. It's been a great study tool. So this is from Jason. It says, uh, let me begin by saying thank you. Without the podcast, Nathan's books, and the demon, I would be lost. You all have developed a multi-tiered delivery system that enables many people to attack the test. I now have immediate access to LSAT material. The value of not lugging around Nathan's huge books to work is immense. (laughs) Yeah. The demon provides me with a convenient way to study while at lunch and during my breaks. I am addicted to learning this test. The videos are fantastic at helping me to understand the approach to answering questions. Please don't stop making the videos. Regardless of my answer's correctness, I watch to see if I attacked the stimulus with the vigor that Ben and Nathan suggest. Keep up the great work, guys. Jason. Wow. That's really, really nice. Yeah. Thanks. I don't know where this... Oh, there's the offer from 2019. Oh, okay. These things are not in the order I was expecting them. But uh, hey, weekly pearls versus turds. You ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. You uh, can send us your pearls, your your alleged pearls, by the way. All you got to do is email help at thinkinglset.com. So please, when you hear a, a tip and you want to run it through um, the fact checker here on the show, help at thinkinglsat.com, send us your uh, LSAT tips, and then we will tell you whether it's a pearl or a turd. Mm-hmm. I don't think we updated the scoreboard. It's 04 and 2. We haven't yeah. yet <laughs> discovered a real pearl. Okay. Four turds and a couple ties. Mm-hmm. You want to read this uh, tip? Yeah, so apparently this was found on Reddit by an emailer. Thank you. Quote, my number one tip for the LSAT, when you're first starting your LSAT journey, don't think of it as studying specific material for a specific test. Later on in the process, you will need to focus almost exclusively on LSAT-specific things like timing, question types, content patterns. But at the beginning, try thinking about it as studying to change the way that you think. More specifically, consider getting a non-LSAT-related book on traditional theoretical logic. (laughs) Oh, dear. Okay. (laughs) The Reddit post continues. The LSAT does not have some rules and ideas that are very specific to the test, but as I am sure most of you know, it is largely a test of traditional logic, and this logic is the bulk of what LSAT prep books teach you. Using only LSAT prep materials leads you to feel that you are studying to prepare for certain types of questions on specific material. That isn't all you should be doing. Instead, you should be teaching your mind how to think easily and quickly in terms of traditional logic. Okay. Well, hmm. you know, I think there, <laughs> there are some, there's some true ideas in here, but I think that the, the ultimate solution is misguided. Yeah. There are some pearls within, within the turd. But yes. that's overall, that's just a turd. I mean, the idea that you could go get a non LSAT related book on traditional theoretical logic, whatever the hell that even means. Uh, that is bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. Traditional theoretical logic. <laughs> what even is that? And I mean, here's the deal, y'alls. The LSAT, I think the LSAT tests three things. I think the LSAT tests your English. Mm -hmm. I think it tests your common sense logic. Mm -hmm. And I think it tests how hard you can work. Sure. And so (laughs) I, I never, ever studied any kind of traditional theoretical logic. I -hmm. never had a, a formal logic class, not one ever. Yeah. But I went to college (laughs) 
<laughs> like, yeah. I, I don't, how do you graduate from college without like having some understanding of just common sense logic? Yeah. And so I, I, I just don't, I, I really don't think, I mean, people all the time, they're like, yeah, before I start my LSAT prep, I'm definitely going to take this, uh, this, this, this logic class at my, at my school. And I'm like, what, why don't even waste your time. What do mm-hmm. you <laughs> talk about something yeah. that is going to like get you distracted and, and start thinking about it in these rigid formulaic terms. I mean, it's almost like this, this turd right here is not even taking its own advice because mm-hmm. it, it's saying like, well, we don't want you to start thinking that you're going to be thinking in these special ways. So instead get this book about formal logic. <laughs> what? <laughs> Which is very specific and special in its own way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, listen, smart folks can just, a lot of people just fucking kill this test for like the first time they ever look at it. I mean, I, I have smart friends and like my smart friends, like they pick up the test and they immediately score 160, like the first time they ever look at it. Yep. So, and that's not with any kind of LSAT training or formal logic at all. That's just like, they're good readers. <laughs> they mm-hmm. like, they're good at reading the questions. They're good at, they're like patient. They try hard. They read the question carefully. And then they're like, well, the answer is B, right? And I'm like, mm-hmm. uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> Cause it makes yeah. sense. That's why. Oh boy. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's a turd. It's a turd. The one thing I would take away from this is that, yeah, you do want to try to learn how to think. And that as you get better at how to think, then you will get better at this test and not get all obsessed with the, the formal logic and things like that. But how do you get better at thinking? You do a practice problem and then you try to understand it as best as you can on your own terms. You try to predict an answer you then see how the answer that you predicted might be wrong. And then you learn from that and see how the correct answer on the test is a more common sense, logical way of thinking. And you keep doing that because we learn from examples much faster than we do from abstraction. Yeah. I mean, I guess to the extent that this is um, referring to all other prep materials besides ours, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe it's a pearl because yeah. like if you pick up a Kaplan book, and start mm. trying to learn about the LSAT, then yeah, it will definitely fuck you up because you will, you'll just be thinking about all their stupid, like semantics and, you know, trademarked names and fancy, stupid, <laughs> like they, they will definitely make your head spin. I mean, not to pimp myself too much, but like I get emails pretty regularly that are like, dude, I picked up your book and I can't believe how different it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, I know yeah. it's just, but it's just fucking common sense though. <laughs> it's yeah. just, it's, I don't know why it, my shit is like, people are like, it's so refreshing. And I'm like, I, I, yeah, I know because I'm just like explaining it in common sense terms. It's just, mm-hmm. <laughs> it just makes sense. So I'm just explaining it how it makes sense. That's all like without getting all, I don't know. I hope, I mean, that's what we're doing with the demon, right? Like that's what we're yeah. doing with all of our explanations. Yeah. Our goal is to make it make sense. So if I'm making a video or if I'm making a written explanation or it bends shit too, it's like, Hey guys, here's how we would approach this question in a common sense way without a lot of unnecessary jargon bullshit. Just here's how this thing makes perfect sense. And we're working from examples and that's it. That's all we, <laughs> that's like all we do. Yeah. Just from yeah. examples. Exactly. People are like, how does your class work though? Like what's the format of your class? And I'm like, um, do you just do questions and then I just help you to understand them? Yep. (laughs) And then they're like, wait, but what, but that doesn't, I want, shouldn't there be like, they expect a lecture because they think that's how classes are supposed to be Mm -hmm. because that's how every class they've ever had is. Yeah. But most education is boring as shit and doesn't work. <laughs> like I'm a, I, I'm like the yeah. world's worst student. I like have hated basically every class I've ever taken in my entire life because mm-hmm. exactly because that's what it's like. It's just like some, here's a boring ass lesson. I'm just going to drag you through this like scripted lesson and read to you a bunch of just nonsense. And instead it needs to be, Hey, give it a shot. 
try, fail maybe. Yeah. And then we'll talk about it. Yeah. You know, and make it make sense. Anyway. It's like all those successful uh, workout programs out there today. They don't have you come in and learn about muscle theory. (laughs) It's like, hey, pick that up. (laughs) Pick up that weight. Nope, you're not quite doing it right. Okay, do it again. They don't even tell you, like, the theory. I think sometimes the, the instructors will comment on stuff. But, you know, you just get it by doing it. And you see, oh, we did 10 reps there and the weight kept going up. I guess that's how we do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and people like those classes and they make progress with them because they're not wasting time with a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Uh, let's check out this email. This is, a, this yeah. is a beautiful thing. It, uh, <laughs> this, this was sent on December 10th of 2018. Okay. So it's a little, we're a little bit behind with this, but this is, this came from Massachusetts school of law in the middle of December. (laughs) Okay. It says it's not too late to apply for the January 2019 term exclamation point. Wow. Good afternoon. I hope you are having a great day. Exclamation (laughs) point. <laughs> Talk about like something that is just wasting time. That, that's yep. that's that. I mean, pleasantries. Being nice is nice, but I hope you are having a great day. Exclamation point. Especially when I'm sure this is just bombed out to like a a list of a bazillion people, right? Yeah. I ho- I personally hope you're having a great day. I'm just sitting here at my desk, just hoping you're having a great day. Oh, anyway. I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am writing because you have expressed interest in beginning law school this January. We are still accepting applications for the spring 2019 semester, which begins in January. If you are interested in attending the information session, our next open house is on December 12, and you can pre register here. Then there's a link. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me directly. I look forward to meeting you in the near future. If you attend the open house and submit your application and personal statement at that time, you will be granted an application fee waiver. If you have your letters of rec and transcripts, you can bring those with you as well to expedite the process. In the event you are not able to attend the open house and are still interested in applying, you may still submit your application and and be considered, (laughs) there's two ands there, for the spring term. I have the ability to access your LSAC documents if you provide me with your LSAC number to expedite the application process. We are here to help you make your dream of becoming a lawyer a reality this spring. Best, uh, some dude with a JD (laughs) who put JD after his name. (laughs) <laughs> JD. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start doing that. Director of admissions from wow. the Massachusetts School of Law. Do we know anything about the Massachusetts School of Law? Is that an ABA yes, we school? Do. Um, <laughs> so one thing, if you search Massachusetts, Mass, Massachusetts, I can't say that right now. School of Law, Google's first suggested question is, is this school accredited? So apparently people are concerned about that. The bar passage rate is 36%. Okay. Hmm. That's concerning. Yeah, that's about all I know. Hmm. So, but we did, we don't know if it's an ABA school. Oh, uh, actually we just learned that it is not. It is not. (laughs) Yeah. Probably why it is, uh, the number one question, at least recommended in Google. I want to make it clear that uh, we're not like actually shitting on non ABA schools. I mean, the ABA, as we have discussed, doesn't really do anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, they, their accreditation standards are so low that it doesn't mm-hmm. actually matter whether you're ABA accredited or not. Yeah. Like, or the fact that like, if you go to a shitty ABA school, mm-hmm. that doesn't do anything for you. So non ABA schools. Yeah. It's just whatever. It's a law school. I'm sure it qualifies you. It does qualify you to take the Massachusetts bar, right? Yep. They uh, did grant 
the Massachusetts Board of Regents of Higher Education authorized the school to grant JDs in 1990. I'm guessing that if you go to an ABA school, probably you're, you're, you're allowed to sit the bar in any state. Does that sound right? That sounds right. Yeah. Okay. You get some more national recognition or something. If you go to one of these non-ABA schools, though, it'll be accredited by the state. So you're just, you know, you're probably not going out of Massachusetts if you go to the Massachusetts School of Law. But you can sit the bar and you can pass the bar and you can get a job possibly. You know, I mean, it's, you're going to have to hustle. You're going to have to like have your connections and, and be able to work it and get a job. But like I, I actually encourage people to consider state bar schools when they come to me saying like, hey, I've been working at a firm for 10 years and my employer wants me to get a JD mm, mm-hmm. so that I can keep working at that same firm. Yeah. Then I very frequently I'm like, okay, well, that opens the door to San Francisco Law School, which is a California bar school, not an ABA school. But Mm -hmm. San Francisco Law School is a lot easier to get into. It's a lot cheaper. It's, you know, why why not at that point? Yeah. Yeah. One of the bad pieces of advice that was being given out on our Facebook group, Ben, Mm -hmm. was this idea that Again, I, it's so the bar passage rate of the school <laughs> does not necessarily apply to you if you have the ability to get into higher ranked schools with higher bar passage rates. Then those Certainly. schools are probably those bar passage rates are more indicative of your actual chances of passing the bar. Mm-hmm. People don't understand that the law school <laughs> doesn't really do that much to help you pass the bar. Yeah, like David Fagman's long ass bullshit email, notwithstanding the education that you get yeah, at law school is not really that much related to passing the bar. Mm-hmm. It's the admission standards of the school that are most heavily influencing that school's bar passage rate. So if Massachusetts school of law has a shitty bar passage rate, it's not because they're doing a bad job teaching people to pass the bar. It's because they are a non ABA accredited school that has not very much prestige. So it does not attract top quality applicants. Yeah. We're going to have to keep yelling about that because people don't seem to get that message. Like they don't understand what's up with bar passage rates. Check this out. This school administered its own examination, the MSLAT, which is supposedly similar to the LSAT. Wow. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's like, it's a janky law school, but like, (laughs) so are all of the low ranked ABA schools. Yeah. I mean, it's not like, it's if you're going to a school that is ranked a hundred or whatever, it's just another law school. It's not, it's not anything fancy. <laughs> Sorry. I'm on Wikipedia right now. And, um, I agree with everything you're saying. I just enjoying some of these quotes here. Yeah. Let's hear it. Okay. So unlike ABA accredited law schools, this law school does not publish employment statistics for its graduates. Fine. <laughs> this is where it gets funny. When asked about the employment outcomes of um, Massachusetts graduates in 2012, Dean Lawrence Velvel said, I have no idea. We have never collected statistics on any of that. So we have, we don't have any notion. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) My job is to collect the checks. (laughs) My very favorite emoji is the shrug one. The one where it's just the little guy with his hands up like, huh? That's what the dean there is doing. It's like, (laughs) oh, employment statistics. Oh, we've never. Well, I don't know. Uh, Do people, uh, people are interested in that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Good times. Again, that's not because of the quality of the education that you receive at school. That's because of the admission standards going in. The employers know of the admission standards going in. Mm -hmm. And so they know that the graduates of the school tend to be not that awesome. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, I, like I hate to break it to you, but that's the that's the system. So anyway, all right, there you go. You can go to law school. Like <laughs> schools are just like, hey, you can come tomorrow. Like, <laughs> just come on, come on in. Put your credit card right here and uh, sign these papers, and uh, yeah, mm-hmm. you're a law student now. And you can put Next JD one? after your uh, name. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Next one. No one out there, you never, ever put JD after your name. <laughs> Don't do it. Or Esquire. Oh, <laughs> I guess if you're practicing 
uh, yeah, formal I mean, if you're practicing letters, you're, they probably do put Esquire, don't they? At the, I think the they signature. do, but at the same time, it's kind of like, I, I don't know, if you feel like you have to for business reasons, I guess you have to, <laughs> but I assume that if you're like <laughs> engaged in some sort of legal work, we all assume that you're <laughs> barred. <laughs> Uh, all right maybe, maybe we need to make that more clear all right so this is this next email is from sophie says, hi ben hi nathan and ben i'm a podcast listener who's looking to apply to law school obviously next fall oh that's not necessarily obvious some listeners are moms of students who are studying to take the sat so <laughs> remember that yeah <laughs> email and, a long time ago? and people who i have a um someone reached out to me recently who is a lapsed lawyer went to law school decided not to take the bar and listens to the podcast just for entertainment <laughs> so. wow okay i hope we keep it up i just wanted to thank both of you for your comments and advice about sexual misconduct in the december 3rd episode given the quote controversy close quote about campus sexual assault in the media this year it was refreshing to hear your references to statistics about sexual assault 96% of assaulters are men, and your commentary on the serious, long-lasting effects that assault has on victims. It's awesome that so many future law school students, both men and women, got to hear that thanks to you. All the best. Well, you, Sophie, yeah. Thank you, Sophie, for the nice email. Comments on that? No, just, I mean, yeah, we're trying to give it to you straight. Like, I, I don't think there's any controversy <laughs> yeah, I wonder what she's referring to there. I, I guess I don't listen to well, news, so that's my problem. <laughs> if you ever looked at like you know Fox News, mm -hmm. then you might get the impression that the whole Me Too thing is just like a complete fraud and oh, oh this oh, isn't Me too okay <laughs> that yeah. this isn't actually happening. You know that oh it's just it, <laughs> yeah. I mean I I don't watch the news at all. I'm not on either team really, but I absolutely believe women coming out and saying that guys are sleazy. <laughs> I know a lot of guys and I mean, my friends are not sleazy, but I know plenty of dudes that are sleazy. And so, yeah, I mean, it's a tragedy that this shit has been going on for so long, but um, I'm very happy yeah. that in 2018, <laughs> it seems like there's a pretty big title shift, you know, that we're just going to like culturally not accept that anymore. It used to just be totally fine. Mm hmm. Office Christmas party, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or just even in the office, slap the secretary's ass or whatever. <laughs> like that used to just be totally, would totally fine. That's crazy. <laughs> I know. That's fucking, and, and of course, if you can get away with that in like just broad daylight, then you can get away with absolutely anything you want at other times. Yeah. You know, say whatever you want, do whatever you want. And anyway. Yeah, we're on uh, we're on the side of uh, forward progress <laughs> culturally, so that's good. Yeah, cool. Next one. Yeah, hi yeah. guys. I'm an LSAT taker outside of the U.S., Australia, and asked LSAC if the digital trial would also be rolled out internationally. This is what they responded with: "Quote, thank you for writing." Two spaces. The digital format of the LSAT will be offered in North America only. The July LSAT being offered in Australia will be pencil paper and is non-disclosed. The options to see the score and choose to cancel is available. They got a subject for disagreement there, but <laughs> the options to see the score and choose to cancel is available to digital test takers in North America only. That's the email from the LSAC. I thought you and some of your other international listeners would find it interesting. Regards, Alyssa. Thanks, Alyssa. Yeah, I do think uh, anybody outside of the country is uh, going to be interested in that little tidbit. Yeah, that's very good to know. Because if anyone asked me, I would have assumed that it would be digital everywhere. I wonder if it's going to go. Di it's got to go digital in September, maybe. I Eventually, they'll get there. But I can see why they would only be rolling it out, you know in a just in North America. I'm actually kind of surprised that they didn't roll it out like state by state or like even center by center. Hmm. Instead, they're just doing like a grand, <laughs> it's going to be crazy. I can't wait. <laughs> There's <laughs> half of the test takers are getting one and half are getting the other in July. It's going to be awesome. 
Yeah. Maybe that we should take the time here to remind people that the July LSAT is going to be special. You, you won't know whether you're going to be taking it digital or taking it pencil and paper. It doesn't really make any difference. Um, the, the digital versions of the test that we have seen or heard about are very slick and it's just, you're just taking it on a tablet. It's no big deal. It's the same questions. It's the same yep. content. So it's not really any big deal, but anticipating complaints, the LSAC is offering a crazy one time only option to take the test, see your score, and then decide whether you want to cancel. Mm. If you do cancel, they'll give you a free retake, which is nice, but not really the the big selling point. The big selling point is the ability to see your score and then decide to cancel or not. I'm anticipating a shit ton of people are going to take that test because it's kind of a free shot. Yeah. I'm also anticipating a ton of people are going to cancel their score from that test. Yeah. Which means that law schools are going to have to not care about everybody canceling their score. <laughs> they don't even have a choice. Everybody's going to do that. Yep. And so whatever, canceling, no big deal. We don't recommend canceling ever, yeah. except for this one circumstance here. You know, you let's say you've been prepping, you've got a good score on record, 170, but you think you can score higher. Mm hmm. Take the July test, and if you score 171 or higher, you keep your score. And if you score 170 or lower, you cancel. Yeah, and even even if you're on the fence about whether you think you can score higher, there's just a chance. There's a reasonable chance or a slight chance. Just do it, right? Free shot. Yeah. yeah. Do you want this lottery ticket? Well, no. I mean, I, I, do I have to pay for it? <laughs> no. Oh, no, it's free. Here you go. <laughs> okay, okay. I mean, you you do have to t- pay the $190. I shouldn't say free, but it's Yeah. It's virtually free because it just it costs nothing compared to the cost of law school. Yep. And and if you get a few points higher and you end up getting $10,000 or more <laughs> hundred thousands of dollars of scholarship money, then it's totally worth it. But I, what I wanted to point out is that it's really only useful if you already have a score on record. That's right. I mean, it's still useful to take if you can't get a score on record before then, just because, hey, look, you can still cancel if it's a total shit show, or you can keep it <laughs> and at least um, have the opportunity to take one more test that is not going to be disclosed. So you're never going to have access to this test in any other circumstance. So either you should try to take the test before then so you can have a score on record and really leverage the uh, July LSAT, or you, if you can't do that, fine, but if you can take it, take it. I, I just don't see any downside. Yeah, um, I totally agree. But it's, it, I think it's worth more if you have that score on record a lot more. before. Yeah. So I, 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 I yeah. don't want people waiting to take it. Like, I've heard people say, okay, yeah, so I'm just going to wait and I'm going to take it in July. That's going to be my first attempt because yeah. of the free cancel thing. And it's like, no, uh uh-uh. uh. Get your best score on record as soon as you can. So that could be March, uh, could be June, but try to get that done and then take the freebie in July and, yeah. and see if you can score higher. Cool. Thanks, Alyssa. We, yeah. we really appreciate news like that. That's uh, very useful. So again, help at thinkinglsat.com if you want to share any uh, tidbits with the listeners. Yeah. You want me to read this one? The yeah. In India? Okay. Yeah. So this is question seven in LSAT India 2009, section one. Question seven, an economist is talking to us. The economist says, in our country, the price of cola is regulated by the Cola Commission. Decades ago, when the commission was formed, such regulation was reasonable because there was a monopoly on cola production. Now, however, fierce competition in this market keeps cola prices low. So the cola commission should be abolished. Okay. The conclusion is clearly the last sentence. The cola commission should be abolished. This thing about saying that something should happen is that you have to take into account everything that could weigh for or against that decision. And in most cases, the arguments only focus on one thing. And here the arguments have only focused on one thing. And even that one thing is problematic. But I don't know. It's just something that I always think about when I see should in the conclusion. Totally. I I love doing these questions because I've never seen them before. Yeah. It's fun to for me to see brand new LSAT questions. But my 
my very first thought, so now I'm covering up the answer choices, which by the way, people, if you can <laughs> cover up the answer choices or just don't look at the answer choices, just focus on the argument itself. Yeah. A side note on that, by the way, that you mentioned that, um, I hand out three by five cards in my class Oh, nice! and just tell people, Hey, cover up the question, cover up the answer choices and just figure out what you think <laughs> about that passage. How does that work with the demon? Can people like, can you scroll on your phone so that you don't see the answer choices or is there a way to do, maybe that's a feature request. Mm, yeah. We don't have that feature yet, but you could, again, a just use passages. a three by five card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Low tech. <laughs> Low tech. But we could also ask the developers for a virtual three by five card. We certainly could. And, um, uh, but I would say that I think you're right. Like most of the passage is going to take up the screen. And so you do have to scroll down to see the answers in most cases. Okay, perfect. So without looking at these answer choices, you know, my, my first thing is I want to use, I want to use the, the facts that they've given me, but I want to point out to them that their conclusion is not justified by their facts, Mm -hmm. right? I'm granting them all of their facts. I'm granting you that fierce competition in the market keeps cola prices low. Mm -hmm. But I don't grant you your conclusion that the COLA commission should be abolished. Yep. And specifically, I want to ask you one important question, which may or may not be actually the answer. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you, would there still be fierce competition without the COLA commission? Yeah. That's That's a question I had in my mind, too. We know that it's keeping the COLA prices low, but why is there fierce competition? Do we know? Does the cola commission do anything else besides regulate the price of cola? Yeah. Like for example, do they make sure that there's not a monopoly? Yep. I would bet that that's the answer. Yeah. But uh I don't know. Let's see. Go ahead. Yeah, or anything else, really, right? Like the cola commission um helps starving children in another country. <laughs> like that's weird, but if that's true, then should you be getting rid of it? right now, right? Yeah. Like or you, you're going to give up on something else that hasn't been discussed. This and the argument to be complete needs to say, this is the only thing to consider <laughs> and whatever, you know? Yeah. My brother-in-law works there and he has a, it's no, you don't understand the coal commit. The purpose of the coal commission is to enrich our friends. Yeah. <laughs> like that, That's like a shady reason to have the coal commission, but that's a reason to have the coal commission. Yep. Uh, so yeah, when you say the cola commission should be abolished, you're like saying there's no other, no other reason why we should keep it. Yep. You know, that's, that's more important. You're just, you're basically saying because you don't need, because there's competition in the market that keeps the cola prices low. And that's one thing that the cola commission does, but they don't need to do that anymore because of the competition. Therefore we should blow up the cola commission completely. Mm-hmm. It's like, wait, hold on. <laughs> what else do they do? Yep. All right. The economist's reasoning is most vulnerable to criticism on the grounds that it fails to consider the possibility that. So, this is interesting. It's a it's a flaw question because this is most vulnerable to criticism, um, and we're looking for something that the argument is failing to consider. But because that fails to consider the possibility that phrase is in the question itself Mm -hmm. you could think of this as just a weakened question because all five answer choices are going to weaken uh, well they're not going to necessarily they're not going to weaken the one of them is going to weaken the conclusion and much more than the others and the others are probably going to do nothing okay yeah i mean i actually think it is a weakened question okay so you just straight up say hey this is weakened well, yeah. right. I mean, if I glanced at that question, I would put it in the flaw category, but mm-hmm. I, I do think that actually it's a weakened question because the correct mode of analysis here is just which one of these five, if true, is going to weaken the argument. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder, uh, this is just a, a random like technicality that I'm thinking of right now, but I wonder if an answer choice could be wrong because they do the argue, consider the possibility. Yeah, they do consider the possibility. But then again, if they do consider it, then it's probably been conceded and not going to weaken it. I don't know. In yeah. any case, which answer weakens this conclusion? A says the cola commission regulates aspects of the cola industry other than the other than cola's price. Oh, okay. It does something else. So maybe we shouldn't blow it up yet. I would yeah. keep this one open for sure. 
Oh, I would just say that's guaranteed the answer. I mean, the, I'm going to go through the rest of them, but that's the answer for sure. Okay. So B, no new competitors have entered the economist country, co- country's cola market in the last several years. I don't care whether they have or haven't. Yeah, there can still be fierce competition, even if no new competitors have entered in the last hundred years. Who yep. cares? If there's yeah. competition, there's competition. I don't, I don't really care. Yep. C, many dedicated and talented people serve on the Cola Commission. (laughs) Okay, but if they're no longer needed, then maybe we should let them go. Yeah, no, I mean, that actually could strengthen the argument. Yeah. Like, they should be working at NASA instead. So, (laughs) let's let's get rid of the Cola Commission. We're wasting these people's time. Yep. D, ending regulation of Cola prices in the economist country will have no effect on these prices, which are already below the ceilings set by the cola commission okay so if we get rid of them everything's going to be fine so this would strengthen seems like it yeah yeah so this would strengthen the argument this is out e the cola commission was originally set up by economists Ooh, glad to know that (laughs) i'm not sure why that's relevant but okay yeah so the answer is a yeah by the way, you know, my, my first thought was going to, I said, I want to use their facts against them. Right. I said, mm-hmm. Hey, would there still be fierce competition Yeah, without the cola commission? A says the cola commission regulates aspects of the cola industry other than cola's price. Oh, you mean like competition monopoly, for example, yeah. <laughs> could be one of the things. Yeah. I love doing else that logical reasoning. It's so fun. It is fun. It's a fun easy game once you learn how to play it it's just like you can just crush these questions so hard yeah it's awesome All right. i love what i do ben do i you love what you do <laughs> i know i love what i do i um have really started to enjoy too this whole demon stuff because i feel like it's they say that the um the most effective thing is where you combine like computers and people together Right. Like yep. computers by themselves are effective. People by themselves are effective or can be effective. But together you leverage both like devices, if you consider people devices strengths. And so it's kind of fun to work on the demon and like take what we know about the LSAT, put it online. But then it's not just like a, it's not just a tool. It's also us being involved and in providing the explanations. Yeah, it's just a better way to deliver what we do. So that's, uh, yeah, makes all the sense in the world. Yeah. Cool. You want to take this one? Sure. Oh, personal statement time. Okay. Yeah. I'm not sure why this is addressed to me. I don't remember what's going on here. Oh, well, it's a little pimping of your services so we might as well do it ben yeah first i'd like to thank you so much for your tutoring program i raised my september score 10 points from my june score however i am taking it one more time in january to try and increase it a few more points in hopes of potentially receiving more scholarship money i love that wow okay (laughs) someone on the phone this morning was like are you going to talk to me in the class are you going to give me advice about admissions and stuff too and i'm like you bet your ass I am <laughs> like whether you like it or not, yeah. it's not going to be just else that shit. I'm going to absolutely be talking to you like every time I see you about how important it is that you get scholarship money for law school. Right. Uh, no, tip number one, don't apply. Tip number two, <laughs> if you tip do, number one, pick something better to do with your life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you're not going to follow tip number one, <laughs> tip number two is get a scholarship. God damn yeah, it. That's right. Cool. I am reaching out because I have been crafting my personal statement for quite some time and have had numerous students from the podcast group look over it. I was wondering if I could send it into the podcast for it to be read or just reviewed. Having you quickly glance at it and give it your stamp of approval would be awesome. (laughs) Best Sterling. Yeah, but Sterling, we're not, we don't do that. (laughs) <laughs> no, we can do that. I mean, quickly glance at it and give our, our stamp of approval would be awesome if that's possible. <laughs> I don't think I love- I've ever done that. I did. There was one yeah. student who wrote in and the content was pretty good uh, and the writing was pretty good, but I still, I think I had like seven or eight bullet points and one of them was, or one or two of them were pretty substantive. It's like, Hey, uh, you might need to rework your second to last paragraph and your last sentence. 
like this is not where you what you want to be saying and then there was a bunch of other little things that they needed to change and but anyway so yeah quick stamps of approval are not in existence yet no <laughs> and it's like it's like wishful thinking right people are yeah. always like they w- <laughs> they want to be done with it <laughs> they want to apply. They want to be done with it. I they want. They want the comfort blanket, right? Oh, it's good. Yep. Okay. Now send it in. <laughs> but the, that's what people. By the way, when you have like some attorney that you know look at it for you, like they do you a favor to look at it. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. what they're doing for you. They're just like they're going. Oh yeah, that's yeah, fine. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they don't give a shit. We we give a shit. We do this professionally. Okay. Are we ready for this? Yeah. The spring of my first year of college, I walked the streets of downtown Montgomery with numerous resumes in hand in the hopes of landing a part-time job. I don't know. I'm I'm already worried about the fact this took place a while ago. It's your first year of college. You're looking for a job with your resumes in hand. It doesn't sound like the most effective way to find a job. I think you're trying to show us that you're determined, (laughs) which is good, working hard, but maybe not smart. That's funny. I didn't even think about that. But yeah, the (laughs) wandering the streets, like handing out resumes. Okay. I I agree 100%. I'm not learning anything new about you. Like, I'm assuming that you're going to get a job in Montgomery, which is already on your resume. Yeah. I will say that I am I am somewhat somewhat you I'm gonna have to say somewhat a third time, somewhat impressed by the <laughs> fact that you're out there doing something. I do get the impression that a lot of people are afraid to just get themselves out there, whether they have to call people, whether they have to, you know, make real contact. I think it is more effective to search online and figure target w- places that you want to go, but then ultimately you got to put yourself out there, whether that's a call or an in-face meeting. And a lot of younger people don't do that today, right? They per- they they want to hide behind email or texting or something like that. So there is some aspect of this that I am impressed about, but I also have a lot of concerns. It sounds unorganized and lost. Anyways, I like that it. Has I as the subject of the sentence? Yes, that's and good. A a verb, um, like I yep. did a thing. I don't like that that thing is walking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it just it doesn't sound like lawyer shit. You're you're a kid now because it's the spring of your first year of college. Yep. So I'm picturing a child walking around, <laughs> handing out resumes. Yeah. It's just like, yeah, all right. Like, where's the lawyer shit? I, I, I can anticipate where you're going to go, mm-hmm. which is I got a job. I kicked ass. I did all these things. It's awesome. Yep. But why don't we start with the ass kicking yeah, <laughs> rather right. than the w- walking mm-hmm. around? Yep. Mm-hmm. This is your first sentence, which is why we're talking about it a lot. Yeah, right. I know. I'm, I bet listeners are like, get on with it. Like, what's the, where's yeah. the rest of the statement? But they, you don't understand how important that first sentence is. Yeah. I mean... I hate to break it to you, but the first sentence might be the only sentence they read. It's totally mm-hmm. possible that they're going to just like glance at it and go, eh, nah. Yep. <laughs> On the kindergarten field, when I was a kindergartner, <laughs> People are I like, was nope. concerned about justice. Like, yep. Okay. Next. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. They would lie to you and tell you that they read, you know, every word. Oh no. <laughs> we thoughtfully consider every application that we receive. There's no fucking way they do that. Nope. No. <laughs> No way. Not with a, not when they have, you know, whatever it is. How many applications did we recently said Georgetown got, they get 10,000 a year. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're not, (laughs) there's no way that they're looking really heavily getting into every single one of those personal statements. Nope. I mean, if they are, they're stupid and we have to grant them not being stupid. Well, you don't have to be that smart to realize that you don't have enough time in the day to to sit here and read all this. <laughs> right. Unless it's important or intriguing or persuasive. Yeah. So the image that I have after one sentence is a college kid walking around handing out resumes. And it's like, mm, I wish I had, mo- I wish I just, I'm not picturing you as a lawyer just yet. Yep. I also, there's one word in this that I hate 
so much. There's one word in this sentence. If I could cut one word, you want to guess what just it is? One by itself as opposed to a phrase? Yeah, again, let me reread it. The listeners can play along at home. Okay. The spring of my first year of college, I walked the streets of downtown Montgomery with numerous resumes in hand in the hopes of landing a part-time job. If I could cut just one word. N- numerous? Fuck yeah, that's so annoying. <laughs> Why is that so annoying? It's <laughs> <laughs> so terrible. How did that make it through? How, how did that make it through the the review group? I don't know what your concern is. I guess my concern is, is that you have multiple copies of one resume. It's just, it's so fucking, the word resumes already yeah. implies, and I get it. Like, yeah. oh, you didn't, oh, you mean you didn't just go around with one resume? <laughs> like showing it to people? Yeah. Can, can you keep, oh no, sorry. It's my only copy. You can't keep it. I'm sorry. Like we, we understand how resumes work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, dear God. So there are some, while we're talking about, it, I guess there are some phrases here that I would cut out. Yeah. Oh, I, trust me. I would cut out more stuff. Let's hear it. Yeah. So the spring of my first year of college, I would just say when I, my freshman year or when I was a freshman, I walked the streets of downtown. Montgomery. How about cut that whole thing? I walked the streets. I walked the streets of downtown Montgomery with resumes in hand, hoping to land a part-time job. Hoping to land a part-time job. And then we read your next sentence. To get a land. Yeah. Yeah. I don't... Why do I need to picture you as a college kid right now? What what information are you conveying here? Why why is that a part? Why is that your story? Mm -hmm. I mean, just basically just why is this your story anyway? Like that sentence is not... That's not your story. Get to your story. But... (laughs) <laughs> yes. Okay. Anything else you want to cut or change? No, no. The content is the most important thing. So I, I in the hopes of landing, mm-hmm. uh, you said hoping, which I thought was a lot better. I said, hoping to land. Yeah. But hoping to land is much better than in the hopes of landing. Yeah. You could even say to, you could just say with, to with, get with a resumes, part-time job to get a part-time job. Also, if you're walking around with resumes, we know you're trying to get a job. Yep. I don't know that a part-time job makes that much of a difference. But it also it kind of raises a question, like, why Why do you want a part-time job? Do you want Because like, he's in college. Yeah, I understand. But, I mean, it's like sort of like, I don't know, it's like a distracting like point, I guess. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's also, it's just, yeah, the whole thing is a distracting. The whole thing is just like, wait, you had a part-time job while you were in college? Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you're hired. You're in. Like you're, <laughs> you're admitted immediately because you. I don't know. All right. Sorry, Sterling. We're not. I mean, we're not like. I'm not picking on you in. in you know, particularly. I'm just. You got to think about what story people need. You all need to think about what story you're telling here. And I, this, like, I've learned about you right now that you got a part-time job when you were in college. Yep. So we'll just okay. delete that. Gone. <laughs> okay. That's out. <laughs> A few days Let's later, pretend this is the first sentence. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A few days later, I received a phone call from a small law office that specialized in managing court appointed guardianships. Okay. It's, it's like, I, I'm sorry. It's just like, oh my God, what a scintillating story. You mean they actually called you to offer you the job? Holy shit. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't. Yeah, certainly. Like we could jump through all of this. We could just say. Talk about the work you do there. In college, I worked as a runner at a small law office like that. Yeah. Or, you know, a small law office that specialized in managing court appointed guardianships. Right away, we'd be like, okay, well, we don't need to know how you got that job. We would know that you did something to get it. A lot of college students don't have jobs or the jobs that they have are very simple, right? Like managing tables. I don't want to say that's simple. That's, that can be challenging, but I guess they're not necessarily legal related, right? You are, now we know you have some legal experience, maybe as a runner. What are you doing as a runner? I hate it so much. I hate, I just (laughs) fucking hate it. So the third sentence is they offered me a position as a runner 
as a young college student, I saw this merely as a source of income. I never thought being a runner would alter my perception of the law. That's the entire first paragraph, and I fucking hate it. Hey, delete. <laughs> <laughs> delete. Delete entire first paragraph. It's amazing how often we end up doing that in our personal statement service. By the way, if you would like us to rip the shit out of your personal statement, go to thinkingelset.com and sign up because y'all need help. And I, yes, I understand that we are selling things here, but you just, you need help. You're not good at telling stories. It's, it's not working. How many times have we said, oh, we don't want to picture you as a child doing minor league childish shit? Uh, 427. Yes. This is 428. We, it's, I hate the like, okay, so now I'm picturing you as a naive college student. (laughs) You're a young college student. Yeah. You pointed that out twice that it's a first year of college and now you're a young college student who, oh, by the way, you're also seeing this merely as a source of income, which makes you look like shit. Yep. Oh, I was only doing it for the money. (laughs) Great. Wow. Boy. And then, you know, I never thought that being a runner would alter my perception of the law. And it's like, Oh, so you got a job that, that, that like impacted you. Yeah. That's what happens when you get jobs. <laughs> like that's great. Mm-hmm. But that's also just like, I glance at your resume and I see that you got this job while you're in college and I go, Oh, cool. Like got into it and got into it. Yep. Like that's not, this is not unique. It is not interesting. It is not painting yourself in a positive light. It's just not, it's not the story you want to tell. Yeah. You know, the good news here is let's delete all this. So the first paragraph is gone and let's focus on this next paragraph. Cause I think even if it needs some work, it's a much different picture. Like if this is what you, if you started with this second paragraph, we'd have a much different impression of who you are. Yeah, totally. Okay, so here's the here's the first sentence of the second paragraph. If we mm-hmm. pretend that this is the first sentence. Over the course of my time at the parish law firm, I have worked with a multitude of disabled veterans. That sentence is wordy. Yeah, it needs work. But the content is much closer to what we're looking for. You've worked with disabled veterans. Okay. Hmm. Wow. What have you done? That's not easy. It doesn't sound like easy work. Now you sound... And by the way, there's no mention of being a runner here. I hope this is no, because I don't need to hear about it. You're you're running. You're you're runner at the law firm part. I don't need that yeah. part. Yep. <laughs> you getting coffee? I don't really want to hear about that part. I want to hear about you doing lawyer shit. And now yep. this is lawyer shit. Yep. The sentence sucks because over the course of my time at could just be at. Yep. At at and I don't know that I capitalized the name of the firm or th- I. W- the the part not the the yeah but anyway it would be much better if it was at the parish law firm yep i and then it goes i have worked with a multitude of oh. disabled veterans no nope, no nope, nope. i've worked with disabled veterans period uh, just yeah and i don't i'm not sure about i have worked with either just why not i work with yeah or i, work I, with, or I worked yeah but if you're not there anymore then i worked if you're still there, then I work. work. Even then, like work is a little ambiguous. What What do you do? Yeah. I mean, but it's still way better than where we started walking the streets <laughs> of downtown Montgomery. Yeah. I would love it. The first sentence could say, I work with disabled veterans. Period. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even better, it would be like, what do you do when you work with yeah. them? But you still. help them like, I don't know, manage their finances. I don't know what you do, but yeah. anyway. Okay. All right. We're, we're getting there. I'm, uh, this is the first fact that I've learned about Sterling that I actually give a shit about, by the way. Like, yep. oh, that's interesting. You work with disabled veterans at a law firm. Yep. Wow. Okay. Like, tell me more about that. Yep. All right. Here we go. Most of these individuals were deemed incompetent by the courts. Why do people choose big, f- fancy words when they just don't need to? This is, it's so, th- this is really irritating writing. So far, numerous, multitude, and then here individuals. Yeah. What are you doing? Yep. Like, are you trying to use multi-syllabic words just to do that? Just because you think that makes you sound clever or something? 
would you actually say that? And would you say that to someone? Yeah. Most of the, would you, cause if you would, I don't know why you would <laughs> like, yeah, no, it's a good question. How about, that's what we always ask. I mean, you yeah. know, they were deemed incompetent by the courts. Yep. They were most of them yep. were deemed incompetent by the courts. Mm-hmm. Not most of these individuals. Ugh, it's like, like the LSAT. skin crawl. I hate it. The LSAT's always saying persons instead of people, you know? Right. It needs to be like, it just, it needs to be conversational. People don't understand that conversational really works. Mm-hmm. It should sound like a human is talking to you. It should ha- it should, there should be, there needs to be a human voice here. It's a human voice that's, it's a conversational tone that's been slightly polished, right? And, and gutted. Because when we talk, we tend to insert extra words that we don't need. And when we read them back to ourselves, we can say, ah, we could have said this more efficiently or concisely. That's fine. But it's still going to sound like someone talking with a little polish and fewer words. That's it. Polish, but not like people end up sounding pompous. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Polish means you take (laughs) and you make it squeaky a little cleaner than what it was. Not that you're dramatically altering or trying to completely change who you are. Polished, not pompous. Mm -hmm. And this is, it it just, it really is. It sounds so pompous when you say that like that way. Sorry, Sterling, not you. (laughs) Generally people. Yeah. And I don't think people are aware of it. Like Sterling's not trying to do this necessarily, but this is unfortunately what kind of comes out when we start writing. Yeah. Okay. Some were homeless. Some had committed crimes while suffering from mental disabilities developed during their time in the military, while others suffered terribly from addictions. Ooh. That that sentence sentence is a run-on sentence. That is a broken sentence. I've already done this before, but I am um, not endorsing (laughs) the personal statement review thing on facebook yeah yeah it's surprising that people didn't catch that that's three that's two sentences in one some were homeless some had committed crimes while stuff okay some were homeless some had committed crimes while others suffered terribly from addictions Uh, like at the same time it's a strange association of clauses there yeah, that's not, that's a, that's a, not a, cur- that's just, I don't know why, but that's just not correct. Yeah. <laughs> let, let me do quickly. I do a word count on that sentence just because I'm curious. They will tools. Oh, I see. 25. Yeah. That's getting up there. That's getting up there. And here Sterling got himself in trouble and nobody in the, and who reviewed it in the personal statement review even caught it. Keep your sentences shorter. And uh, that's like got some weird broken list. It's just a very odd construction. Mm -hmm. And then we have two spaces, Ben, you see that? Yep. Two spaces after doing one space. It's been one space all the way through. Then there's two spaces after that broken sentence. You know, there's a lot of debate about this whole two space, one space thing, but here's something that is absolutely not debatable and if anyone does you're wrong and you need to shut up you cannot go back and forth <laughs> yeah you can't go back and forth we prefer one space and you definitely can't go back and forth um and so here now sterling has gone back and forth anyway i witnessed firsthand how legal assistance for disabled veterans is lacking i noticed that we revere our men and women in uniform Yet when they finish their service to our country, the services provided to them are inadequate. Hmm. I feel like we get this kind of theme often, not necessarily with disabled veterans, but with any sort of disadvantaged group. And the person writing the personal statement will do what Sterling is doing here and saying, I witnessed firsthand or I saw how this was a problem. And I don't necessarily have a problem with that idea, but this is just telling. We need to know how you know this. Otherwise, we just have to trust you 
that their legal assistance was lacking. It's telling because it's just saying it was lacking. Yep. Like what happened? Did someone need legal help with a particular problem and they weren't able to get it because they don't have money because you're I, like, what, yeah, what is going on here? You're working for a law firm too. So it's a little confusing how like you're not working for a um, nonprofit um, resource center or something like that in which you would encounter people who need legal assistance, but can't get it. Like you're working at a law firm. I'm trying to understand how the people you're working with aren't getting legal services. Aren't they coming to you because they are getting legal services? I'm confused. I guess that's what's going on here. I just, it's, it's also, it's the plight of the downtrodden and I want to know what you did about it. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what you saw like this. I feel like we've said this a thousand times. Stop telling me about injustice Start telling me what you do about that. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm here to learn about you. I'm not here to learn about the unfortunate situation with our disabled vets. No. I'm on your team. I want to do something about it too. I mean, I hope you do something about it. But I want to know what you do about it, not just hear you talking about it. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just... <laughs> I care, but that is not what the purpose of this document is. I'm not here to learn about disabled vets and how, how shitty they have it. Yeah. One, I already know that. Two, I'm here to learn about you. So the fact that you saw this doesn't really, this is, doesn't, it's just not a selling point for why you're going to be a kick-ass lawyer. All right. Hopefully it gets to the, it needs to get going here. Right, Ben? Like it needs yep. to get, like we got to see Sterling in action here. Yep. So far, Sterling hasn't done anything. Except worked with disabled veterans, which is a good start. So Walked around there. handing out resumes, got a job as a runner, started working with disabled vets and saw some shit. But yep. we don't really know what that shit is, but saw some shit. Okay. Third paragraph. After a few weeks at the firm, I accompanied an attorney from our office on a client visit. This client had recently been admitted to a mental health facility. He was charged with vandalizing a business and numerous counts of criminal mischief. I was nervous and did not know what to expect. By the way, again, going back and forth between one space and two spaces. Between sentences. Yep. This was the first time I had met a criminal suffering from a mental health disorder face to face. No, um, you don't put hyphens between face to face like that. Yeah. You, I think it's confusing because when you do face to face and you're using it as a modifier. So if it comes before a noun, you'd say face to face meeting with hyphens. If you're doing yes. it after, not as a modifier, then, um, or I guess it's modifying something, but it's coming after the noun, then it's no hyphen. And that's true for other phrases like that as well. That's also the type of shit that like a lawyer would just glance at that and they would, they are going to know things about you as a writer if they see that. Yep. They glance at it. And by, and the same thing with two spaces going back and forth between two spaces and one space, they glance at that and they start judging you. Mm -hmm. And if you, so if you can't see that, it means you need to get help. And right now the, if this is like he, he Sterling, I mean, to go back to what Sterling is asking here. I've been crafting my personal statement for quite some time and have had numerous, <laughs> numerous, there's that word again, yeah. and have had numerous students from the podcast group look over it. I was wondering if I could send it into the podcast for it to be read or just reviewed. Having you quickly glance at it and give your stamp of approval would be awesome. That makes it sound like Sterling thought that this was a completed document, right? Yeah. There's so many things in just the first few paragraphs here that a lawyer would look at and go like, oh, okay, like you're not, you just don't seem like a lawyer to me. I'm not, not to say that you can't become a lawyer. I'm not saying this is like instant disqualification from law school. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah. What I am saying is this could be so much better. Yep. It could be so much better. Like you, without all those distractions, people would just be listening more to your story with all those distractions. They're like, oh, well clunky here, clunky there. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's a broken sentence. Ooh. Yeah. You know, Anyway, okay. This is the first time I had met a criminal suffering from a mental health disorder face-to-face. -face. 
I was scared because I had a preconceived notion that all individuals suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder were aggressive and defiant. However, once I began talking with him, I observed a sense of hopelessness in his demeanor. I was overcome with sympathy for this individual. Even though he was guilty, our job was to mitigate the consequences he faced upon being released from the mental health facility. You want to... <laughs> Uh, I don't know what, okay, so, hmm, what did you do? I'd like to know more about your your job. Your job was to mitigate the consequences he faced, so what'd you, what'd you do for him, I guess? Yeah, I, I don't, you were overcome with sympathy, I don't give a shit. I don't, I don't care. <laughs> like, I'm, it's just, I'm not, that's not, a, that doesn't sound like lawyer shit to me. You doing something about it would sound like lawyer shit. I think there's another way to to convey that sympathy too, you could say, this is really more telling through facts, but you, you say what this person, this person was, you know, in a mental health facility, uh, you are, you want to help them get out without as many consequences as they could face, or you want to mitigate the consequences that they're going to face. I think that itself, the fact that you are not judging them, that you are trying to help them conveys your sympathy through your actions. Yeah. If you show me what you did about it, I would be like, Oh wow, you're a compassionate, hardworking, like lawyer person. You you actually care about this. You're doing things. Yeah. You telling me that you were, I mean, overcome with sympathy, by the way. I mean, if we take that literally, it's like you collapsed. Yeah. You couldn't, you, you could, you just couldn't do anything. You couldn't act, which, which by the way is a very real problem. I mean, I know, former lawyers, like people who went to law school and ended up not practicing law. You know, one thing that they sometimes have in common, Hmm. they get overcome with sympathy. Like they, they can't, they can't handle the emotional toil. The, the, that's not the right word. They can't, the, the, the burden Mm -hmm. of seeing all the fucked up shit that people go through. Yeah. And they can't handle it because they like are, you know, super empathetic people. Yeah. So, I mean, so like now I'm just taking you at your word. Like it's like you're telling me, but if I believe you, yeah. then I think, Oh, maybe you shouldn't be a lawyer. Yeah. I, I mean, that, that's like no, no shit. Like I, I, I know people, like I know people very well who <laughs> that's exactly their, their thing is they, they were too, they had too much empathy for clients and therefore were not able to practice law. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway, I, can I say one more thing I hate about this paragraph? Yeah. It, this pre, I was scared because I had a preconceived notion. It's like, oh, so again, you're showing me you being naive. This is twice in one, tw- twice in the first three paragraphs where Sterling is like intentionally telling the reader about a time that he was naive. Mm-hmm. What? <laughs> it, like that's not the story arc we're going for here yeah okay so i hope i'm getting we're halfway through now you know i need to get to like where sterling is doing something about t- taking action what tell me what you do at the firm yeah shadowing that day was as much a learning experience as it was eye-opening oh dear god <laughs> more telling well also that Huh? Wait. Eye opening is that's that's an expression that is used to show learning. To show learning. Yeah. <laughs> so shadowing that day was as much a learning experience as it was eye opening. Is a that's nonsense. Mm-hmm. <laughs> hey Ben, what's the purpose of shadowing? <laughs> um to learn. <laughs> okay. Uh, I was exposed to the duties of whoa. Uh oh. And lawyering. Whoa. I was exposed to the duties of and lawyering beyond the courtroom. I guess that just the and shouldn't be there. So it should be I was exposed no. A A lawyer? A lawyer of lawyer. I was exposed the court, to the duties of lawyering. Of lawyering beyond the courtroom, or I was exposed to the duties of of a lawyer 
beyond the courtroom. Yeah. <sighs> Extra word in there, and it breaks the sentence which just is unprofessional. Okay. The detail oriented manner in which Mr. Parrish spoke with our client reiterated to me the importance of interpersonal communication within the legal profession. Again, this is telling. It's totally telling. All three of these sentences are unnecessary. The first, the first one is telling the second one. I was exposed to the duties of a lawyer or lawyering beyond the courtroom has already been shown to us by the fact that you're doing non-court related work with an attorney. So we don't need that. The fact that you learned that you should be detail oriented from your attorney's uh, work is telling us more about him than about you. But even so, what it is telling us about you is not very much because we just have to believe that you now understand the importance of interpersonal communication. I don't see that. So, uh, more cutting. What's the, what's the subject of that sentence? The detail oriented manner in which Mr. Parrish spoke with our client that, what is that? One, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven word <laughs> subject. And the verb is reiterated. Yeah. To me, the importance. Okay. So, so it's a manner of speech which is now re- reiterating to you, which is not, that's not possible. That's not a thing. That's not, that's no. <laughs> the manner in which someone does something, could that reiterate? Could that re- reiterate, like reinforce? I guess like, I mean, it's, it's a strange <laughs> concept, but. It's garbage is what it is. That's not a, it's just not a good sentence. It's not a good, it's not a good sentiment. It's like not a good, it's not a, it's not anything that is like, it's not a point in your favor really. And it's just sort of like a, like really the manner, the D specifically, by the way, it's the detail oriented manner of speech. And that's reiterating to you the importance of interpersonal communication within the legal profession. That's a very broad. Really? Yeah. I know. I'm like stroking my chin like, hmm. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> like what? Lawyers are detail oriented? Wow. Boy, never would have. Who would have guessed it? I don't, okay. Although I had always dreamt of becoming a trial lawyer, the notion that I could help others through impactful social interactions instilled in me a great sense of purpose. Okay. More, more telling. I mean, as aside from the fact that this is <laughs> a lot of big abstract words, again, impactful social interactions. Like what is that? What you're having, your attorney's discussion with this individual, this person, <laughs> this veteran, is a is an impactful social interaction. Well, and it's fucking just bizarre. Meeting? Yeah, yeah, it's bizarre because he called out the detail oriented manner. Like, wait, is this an emotional? Is this an impactful social interaction where we're like bonding with this person? Because that's what this next sentence is about, right? Yeah impactful social interactions but the previous sentence the only thing you said about mr parrish's manner of speech was that it was detail oriented which a fucking robot could do let's just imagine for a second that and this is for uh sterling but also pretty much everyone else because i feel like what we're doing right now is what we always do with these statements and (laughs) whether they're on the show or off the show I just don't think people know how to write, but we're trying to teach you how to write by talking about this. Here's an exercise. Take one of these sentences. Imagine that you're now single and at a bar and you're trying to meet someone. (laughs) You can tell them about yourself and you could talk about things that go beyond the Typical discussion of pets and where people want to travel. By the way, it's not a bad subject to talk about if you're wondering what to talk about with someone you don't know. But everybody seems to love pets and travel. But in any case, 
you can talk about more substantive things with people, especially as you get to know people more and um, you want to get to know them and you want to know if they're actually someone you want to get to know. Would you ever say this? Although I've always dreamt of becoming a trial lawyer, the notion that I could help others through impactful social interactions instilled in me a great sense of purpose. I mean, somewhere along the lines, that person's going to be at least looking down, you know, the other side of the bar, like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> or looking at the bartender for help, you know, like, please <laughs> help me. <laughs> Texting their friend, like, you got to call me right now. Call, yeah. 911 emergency, please call me. <laughs> so, how would you... a good personal statement is filled with sentences that you could pull out and say to people and they wouldn't blink an eye? They would be like, oh, that's cool. You did that? Wow. Tell me more about it. And then you'd continue to say sentences that start with I and convey what you did. And then we jumped out of the plane and the plane went off in a different direction, but my chute didn't come up, you know, like, <laughs> sorry, that's just a random <laughs> story, but you could, you tell stories by saying what you did and what happened. And then you go on to what happened next and what you saw. And yeah, the subject of this sentence is not I, the subject of this sentence is the notion that I could help others through impactful social interactions. Yeah. So hold on. What did that many- do? That instilled in me a great sense of purpose which is just so broad and vague and oh so wait this subject is also 11 words long so (laughs) your subjects should be i or they or he or she or mostly i mostly i it's a personal statement it's supposed to be about you so mostly i should be the subject of your sentences but if you have other subjects if your sentences have subjects that are not i they should be like the next sentence at the, or the sentence at the beginning of the next sentence or the next paragraph says disabled veterans are left to the mercy of VA hospitals. Okay. I don't know if you should say that sentence. I'm not even going to talk about that, but the point is the subject is disabled veterans. It's two words. It's concrete. It's not the notion that I could help others through impactful social interactions. <laughs> if your subject is more than two or three words long, it, the big red flag should be going off and you should make sure what, what are you talking about and why? I could not agree more. Yeah. Stop fucking talking about your great sense of purpose and tell me what you do. What did you do about it? Mm-hmm. You're just telling me you're trying to force me to believe that you have this great sense of purpose. Great. Show it to me by showing me what you fucking do at work. <laughs> Disabled veterans are left to the mercy of VA hospitals. Unlike the way we look at our soldiers, passerby either don't notice or purposefully don't look at our vets. My experience with our veterans, on the other hand, continue to fuel my aspirations to become an attorney. Providing assistance for those who have become disabled serving our country should be a top priority and, comma, for me, comma, it is. Tell, tell, tell. Like, I just have to believe you. We don't doubt that, (laughs) but they will. Yeah, uh, right. I mean, I believe you, but if I'm putting myself in the shoes of a law school admissions person who is trying to decide between you and another candidate, when the other candidate shows me that they are passionate or whatever by doing shit then I automatically believe them over someone who is just telling, 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 telling. Yep. And there's a a hidden message here, by the way, that a lot of people don't realize. When you tell the admissions office or officers or whatever that you are passionate about X or that this thing is your top priority or whatever, without showing us, we're sitting there going, maybe there's nothing to show. That's the immediate assumption. Yeah, of course. And so then you have to tell us and we just have to believe you. It's yeah, like but I'm people not going to. Office. Yeah. You just don't sound serious. Like I, I right now, I mean, I don't know Sterling. I have never met Sterling. I am picturing a college kid with not really any real experience. Cause that's what, that's what <laughs> with all this telling, that's what I'm getting out of it. Yep. Like, I believe you that you're like a passionate kid, but you sound like a kid. You sound like a wide eyed kid. And I was a wide eyed kid 
at one point in my life and I was not a good candidate for law school <laughs> at that point. Yep. So I, it's just like, it's possible that this is one where it's just like, you know, the baby fish that you need to throw back. And it's like, well, go get a little bit bigger, go do more stuff for a while <laughs> and grow up a little bit and come back when you're like actually ready for law school. Yeah. And, but <laughs> I mean, and it could be that, Sterling's 40 years old and has all sorts of awesome experience that he could be talking about instead. Mm -hmm. And instead he's making himself look like, you know, a kid. So, Oh my God. So check out this next sentence. I have been working at the firm for over three years now. It's like, Oh boy, would I love to hear what you do? You've done stuff. (laughs) I have no fucking clue what Sterling does at the firm. Yep. You have three years of experience. That's great. Like, what have you done in those three years? There's got to be stuff. There's got to yeah, be things. Yeah, totally. that's what I'm saying. I'm like, yeah. I'm excited now because I'm like, oh shit. Yeah. Three years of experience working in a law firm, Ben. That's awesome. That's like fucking. There's, that's a gold mine, Sterling. You could write ten different awesome personal statements based on those three years of experience. Yeah. <laughs> this is not that statement. Think about how many people apply to law school after working for a law firm for six months. And they think that they've achieved some sort of accomplishment. <laughs> yeah. Or working at a law firm for zero, like ever people yeah. who just like, well, I got a poli sci degree and then I, you know, <laughs> well, I studied criminal justice and then I went to law school. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like with no uh, complete, no sense of what happens in a law firm. Yeah. Sterling, you need to talk about what you do at the law firm and, and all n- enough with this witnessed and seeing and stuff like I, I don't give a shit what you saw i care what you did the next sentence i have witnessed on how many occasions ben oh let me guess here numerous <laughs> <laughs> sterling your numerous privileges have been revoked you yeah. can use plenty of other words there are numerous words that mean numerous such as many several significant <laughs> a lot a ton you often shit don't tons. need them wait <laughs> <laughs> we talk about this. You cut adjectives and adverbs. Don't get rid of them. So I, you, by saying that your privileges are revoked, we're helping you immensely. Like I just said the word immensely <laughs> as I yeah, advocate yeah, yeah, yeah. the cutting of them, but totally. you don't need them. You know, no, you do not. In fact, you need to not have them. Yep. Um, you got to tighten shit up here by, by cutting a lot. I have new, I have witnessed again. It's like, I saw. Okay. I get it. Yep. (laughs) What did you do? But anyway, I have witnessed on numerous occasions, criminally charged disabled veterans seeking help regarding a wide variety of issues. Way too broad. Please. Jesus Christ, please tell me about one of those goddamn issues and what you did about it. Yep. Most of the time we are their last resort. For what? For what? (laughs) (laughs) What's happening? And what do you do to help them? (laughs) This is like the biggest tease. It's like it's (laughs) It's a trailer. (laughs) That's a good analogy. We don't want trailer personal statements. We want actual personal statements. The actual fucking movie. Even trailers, right? They still show you something. You're like, oh, wow. Normally, the trailer gives you way too much. Normally, the trailer gives you the whole fucking movie. That's why I don't really watch a lot of trailers. But (laughs) this is just like, it's such a tease. Oh, my God. It's like those bad trailers where you say, hmm, what is this movie going to be about? I have no clue. (laughs) Is it a horror? Is it a (laughs) sci-fi? This is just like, boy, it's so close. It's like, oh, God, please tell me what, what did you do? What, what? What kind of issues? What? Why are you their last resort? And what do you do to help them? It's not going to say anything. Okay, here we go. Though it can... Oh my God, I am going to hate the rest. Of, okay, sorry. <laughs> I skimmed ahead a little bit. Though it can be challenging to provide assistance to known criminals, comma, and... Are there two spaces right there? Uh-oh. Oh, fuck off. Are you kidding me? <sighs> Okay. From Los Angeles and Vienna with love. <laughs> <laughs> we do love you. We love all of you. But we, you, y'all, y'all need to, y'all need to try harder. 
We've said that before. I can't believe that this made it through the personal statement review shit that's happening on I think Facebook. That's a little I think dis- shocking. Like everyone I disavow. Def- yeah. I don't know. I think I might just disavow the Facebook group because it's like there's so many people giving such bad advice. And then if this is the work product of the personal statement review shit that's happening, like this has been reviewed by people who are bad writers. Yeah. So you don't really want p- bad writers reviewing your shit. It's like Sterling, you're a bad writer and you've had bad writers review this. That's not good. That's not what you're going for. Yeah. Sterling, you can become a better writer, but you need to use I and you need to say what you did. And you need to cut adverbs and adjectives. Most of them. This, it, it, it just, it really feels like trolling Ben, because this one personal statement has all of the things that I hate the most, all of them. Yeah. And it, Cause it's about to have another one of them. Most of the time we are their last resort, though it can be challenging to provide assistance to known criminals. I feel infinitely rewarded. What the I actual feel. fuck? What? <sighs> The you feel you, <laughs> does not, you do not put that word in your personal statement. Yep. So Sterling and everyone else feel privileges have been revoked. <laughs> Numerous privileges have been revoked today. Feeling is the definition of telling. <laughs> yes. I feel, oh, how do you feel? I feel rewarded. No, infinitely rewarded. Infinitely rewarded, Sterling. Wow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> it's an LY adjective. It's an LY adverb. Yeah. Modifying how you feel. Wow. My head is going to explode. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. <sighs> okay. <laughs> this is trolling. There's no fucking way, Ben. There's no way. Yeah. It's trolling. This is, we've been trolled. <laughs> it's a great one. 10 out of 10. It's a perfect troll. You fucking got me a hundred percent, Sterling. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a like, cause I mean, check this out. My reasoning is analogous to that of renowned theologian, Frederick Buckner, comma, quotation. <laughs> Here comes a quote. Oh my goodness. Which this, that should be a colon, not a comma. I guess. No, it should be a period. It shouldn't be what it is. (laughs) That's all I know for sure. Yeah. Okay. Not this. Yeah. And we're quoting quotes are always suspect candidate for worst personal statement sentence ever. (laughs) My reasoning is analogous to that of renowned theologian, Frederick Buckner quote, Vocation is a place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep need. End quote. Wow. Fuck right off with that. That's just, it's, listen, I get it that you, that's an inspiring quote for you. I get it that you like this Frederick Buckner guy. I actually agree with the sentiment. Mm-hmm. Although, That's a definition of vocation. Is that what that is? Vocation is a place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep need. I thought vocation just meant job, but (laughs) like, so your ideal vocation would be a place where your deep gladness meets the world's deep need. And Hey, that's why I'm so happy doing what I do. Yeah. I'm I'm like angry and I'm fucking screaming about this personal statement. (laughs) And I'm deeply glad to do so. Because the world yeah. has a deep fucking need, <laughs> like a really deep need. <sighs> it, it, it's, it, it's like absolutely telling. It's the most telling personal statement maybe we've read. I, I don't know. I, they, all, they all suffer. This one's high up there. It's it like, because, dude, you've already told me, you've told me several times numerous times you've told me how passionate you are how how, i believed you the first fucking time you said it yeah (laughs) he just kept telling me and now i don't believe you anymore actually it's not true i do believe you but (laughs) i'm like angry about how many times you've told me how passionate you are yeah next sentence once assets to our society many of these disabled vets can and will be again prophecy 
<laughs> like after mentioning a renowned theologian, this is. <laughs> Oh, it's not about you. You're not doing anything. You're, you're like, you're, you're, it's the plight of the downtrodden. It's telling it's feeling it's, and it's not about you. Okay. Last paragraph. I desire to further immerse myself in the nuances of the law. (laughs) Okay. Some, I'm sorry, Sterling. I'm sorry. I just, I really am doing it out of love. I fucking promise you. But it's just, this whole thing needs to go. You got to start over. It needs to start with the word I, and you need to say what you did. It's just plain spoken. Say what you've been doing about it. I believe you that you're passionate about the helping these people. And you just need to say, I did this. I did that. I did this. I did that. You might think it sounds boring, but it'll actually be a bazillion times better because the reader will be like just learning and seeing you in action, doing things as you actually help these people that you care so much about. Yeah. Imagine yourself at the bar turning to the side and just say, and the person saying, what, what are some things that you did while you worked at that law firm? And you're like, well, I desire to further immerse myself in the nuances of the law. (laughs) (laughs) just start saying like last year we worked with several people or this one person who yeah tell me about one of them i did this who was gonna was facing these potential consequences and tell us what the consequences are and then this is what we were able to do for him we realized that if he focused on rehabilitation for whatever reasons, da, 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 he could mitigate the sentence. So we helped yeah, him disabled, do this. <laughs> totally. Disabled vet, this, this guy, he's got PTSD. He gets in a bar fight and, you know, uh, breaks somebody's leg. Yeah. And now he's charged with criminal whatever, mm-hmm. assault. Yeah. And we had to defend him. And he was totally guilty, but we were able to show that he, whatever, like he, how you got him off or how you helped him fa- how you helped him get over this criminal charge. It's a serious fucking deal. And I feel real sorry for him because he's a veteran who has PTSD and it's like, I don't blame him for that. And I understand that you defended, you defended him, but like, you need to talk about how you defended him. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. I desire to further immerse myself in the nuances of the law. Someday, perhaps, I will even have the opportunity to tackle the exceedingly difficult task of uh, creating legislation that will have a lasting impact. Perhaps. (laughs) It's long. That's a wordy sentence. It's too long. And it's just like this lofty, like, not only do I want to be a lawyer, but I might want to run for Congress someday. Like, no. Nevertheless... I pl- <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, I plan to be a clear, loud voice advocating for those who, at first glance, may not seem deserving. Okay, just just cut, 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 cut everything. Start over. Blow it up and start over. Start with this one sentence. At the Paris law firm, I have worked with disabled veterans. <laughs> Maybe that will get you going. It might yeah. not even be the sentence that you should have first, but at least it will hopefully get you to start writing. Yeah. And here's a, here's an exercise, write 10 sentences that start with the word I, and then a verb that, that, and, and not learned and not saw and not felt yep. <laughs> or desired or desired or numerous. Or... <laughs> it's not a verb. Just don't say it. <laughs> I, filed a report that's fucking fine i don't whatever just i researched something yep i interviewed something yep i wrote whatever yep write 10 sentences sterling right now write 10 sentences that start with the word i and then a verb that describes something that you did and then you want to build your personal statement around those sentences yep wow (laughs) All right. Wrap it up. That's it. Yeah. 
Thanks, wrap Sterling. it up. Yeah. Thank you very much, Sterling. And I'm sorry, but it's just like, wow, that needs help. Okay. That was show number 174. Thanks all y'all for listening. Nice knowing you. Don't pay for law school. Hey, Ben, mm. unfuck yourself. <laughs> Thanks. I'm working on it. <laughs> all right. Cool, man. <laughs>